Hey guys, it's Mabel here once again, and today I've got the video of my New Zealand bouldering uh, adventures uh, to share with you guys. The first half of the video is going to be recapping and just voicing over a bunch of the videos from um, the Twitch live stream that we did at the uh, Auckland bouldering gym with um, a few of the other Path of Exile streamers. And the second half will be uh, playing clips that uh, we took from Castle Hill just outside of Christchurch, which is outdoor bouldering at its finest. Spent about a whole day there uh, climbing, got a bunch of clips, and uh, I just want to you know, share the entire uh, two days of bouldering we did in New Zealand. So to kick things off, this is uh, the live stream. It was the first ever IRL or in real life stream I've done uh, on Twitch and uh, for bouldering specifically. And this is the Auckland New Zealand gym. We headed up there uh, on our last day of being in uh, Auckland after ExileCon. So ExileCon ended and I went over with my friends and my brother. That's these guys sitting here and uh, also invited all of the uh, other POE streamers that wanted to come along to come along and have a go. So basically got the live stream going and that's just me diving onto a nice little warm up climb. Just uh, orange holds seems to be the easiest of the climbs at the gym. The hardest holds being the white holds and um, it just kind of goes in an order from um, orange to blue to green to purple to yellow red, no wait, red, yellow, black, and then white. That's the order from uh, easiest to hardest. Always a good idea to get a bit of a warm up in. And uh, for some reason, this gym's easiest climbs are actually kind of tough, even for a you know bit of a warm up. So those oranges that are the easiest in the gym are kind of tough for some reason that doesn't really get much easier. Uh, then just dove onto some whatever next uh, kind of challenging problem, which is a purple. And it's got a big dino component we're supposed to jump, catch. Couldn't quite do that. And uh, I then, you know, only gave it one or two shots, still kind of warming up. But decided to jump onto this black instead, which was actually a pretty tough climb. But I was happy with how I managed to send it. And um, you can see here, none of the pieces are too good. Um, you might not be able to see from back here but they are fairly uh, shallow, sort of slopey crimps. Got to get a big heel hook over there, slap that next hold, and then get a lot of tension in to go for the next hold, and uh, so on and so forth. And um, wasn't the only person to finish this one. Our friend Matt did it as well, but still kind of warming up. And uh, I was fairly nervous and fairly uh, flustered from turning on the stream for the first time for a bolder IRL stream ever. Uh, it was, yeah kind of tough to get rid of the pump because I was just getting nervous. My brother here, uh, Igor, then does go ahead and uh, try and finish the purple climb, which is a dino. And you can notice on the right hand side here, we do have Quinn who joined us for a boulder stream and uh, for his first time bouldering in like six or seven years or something. And he um, was pretty damn good, you know, all things considered. Definitely gave it a real good shot. So Quinn um, and I hung out at ExileCon quite a bit. Um, decided that, you know, personalities matched, let's be friends, something like that. And uh, yeah, did quite a bit of hanging out and then I invited him to come bouldering for um, the IRL stream because I got the backpack off of our Twitch partner and I got to use it for about a day. Hopefully more in the future, but for now, just one day's worth. So in the background here, we've got my other friend, Matt, or Lord of Swag 69 from um, the chat. You might know him uh, also finishing that black problem. He's uh, just a little worse than me uh, in general uh, cross bouldering, but still very strong and can do quite a lot of problems these days. So it's good for the competition to have people around your level that can um, push you to newer heights. So it really helps uh, climbing with other people, I feel. And then this here is Quinn having his first go on um, one of the easier climbs. But like I said, these are not very friendly for an absolute beginner. Uh, we couldn't really put him on anything too much easier. There's like a ladder climb off to the right somewhere. But when we're trying to do stuff over here and, you know, he want to have a go at this, it's just kind of tough for a beginner because the wall is overhung at like 30 degrees maybe. It's not quite a 45 degree wall, but it's definitely uh, kind of confusing as well. 
like these uh, holds, this climb. It's not very straightforward. There's a lot of pieces and uh, there's a lot of different ways to grab this stuff. So it's not very intuitive. And you can see one of the mistakes there is uh, that newer people make is getting their feet way too high uh, to their hands which just makes things a lot more difficult. So you gotta try and keep your arms somewhat straight and um, like hanging underneath pieces. This is the next climb we put them on, which is a blue climb, uh, just uh, supposed to be a little bit harder, I think, but uh, in this case, it was just an easier climb overall and he got through it and that was his first top out for the day. And uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with um, how he tried through the entire day, just kept on sieging and uh, p putting himself into every climb he could just to get a go of it. Uh, here we have a white climb, one of the harder climbs I attempted for the day, maybe one of the hardest climbs in the gym at the time, and it's got really shitty pieces. All of those are kind of slopey and just kind of uh, uncomfortable, and then the last final hold is a big throw off of a tiny shit footer, and I couldn't quite stick it. Did end up trying it again. Uh, as we all know, you get something like a 15% uh, power increase when you take your shirt off, and that's typically how it is. Take your shirt off, go for the sand, get the camera out. You know, it's just bouldering. That's that's just how it goes. Uh, it did not seem to work this time around though because, yeah, I couldn't stick that really bad hold this time around. And then we got Quinn onto what is supposed to be one of the easier climbs in the gym, uh, the orange little ladder thing off to the side it's met, it's basically their warm-up induction climb so you're just supposed to climb up there and then jump down and show the um, people that run the gym that you can fall and that you've adequately learned how to fall he went all the way to the top though because you know what a beast and then jumped back down and did a pretty good tactical roll uh, at this point we did have uh, the owner of the gym approach uh, me and start talking about Twitch and bouldering and IRL streams and whatever. So he owns the gym, but um, he's never really heard of Twitch. He'd never really understood what Twitch streaming, gaming streams, anything like that is. And I'm basically just explaining my job. And then as well as that, uh, what I'm doing here with the real life stream, because we were pulling four and a half to 5,000 viewers at the time. And that was just blowing his mind since he's run a little bit of a live stream for their uh, bouldering competitions and they'd get, you know, minuscule numbers by comparison. So he was very uh, just interested in what we were doing. And at this point we were joined by uh, Noogie, uh, Ziz and Havoc and also Ziz's girlfriend. And that there is Noogie doing his first climb and he was kind of a natural at this entire process. Ziz gets on as well. Slightly less of a natural, but to be honest, he's probably carrying an extra 20, 25 kilos over Noogie, who is just a lean, shredded beast. So it is a lot harder, you can imagine, if you just grab a 20 kilo cement bag, strap it to your back, and have to uh, do some climbs or any sort of physical activity. It's a lot harder. And, uh, you know, he did the best for what he could. And it's also kind of harder to figure out what next moves you're going to do. Uh, when it doesn't feel all that easy. Likewise with Havoc, it was his first time trying this as well. And uh, he had done some gym exercises in the past and he's got some decent grip strength, but it's still kind of tough to figure out what your next moves are, where you're supposed to be grabbing and all of that. And uh, it was a bit of a learning process for him too. So out of the three, Noogie definitely did the best, but he's also got the best um, sort of start to get into this sort of thing with his frame. And I'll leave you with the clip for now of uh, his hardest send for the day. You really wanna do this now? I wanna do it, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's it. See so if you can get it. Can you get your right foot up? Yep, and then right hand over the top of it. Just commit, yeah, nice. Feet back on, get your left foot out. Can you get your left foot all the way out into the next piece? He's a beast! Yeah, there's a low, low left foot down here. Now I used to climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! I was in a better shape then. I think he's made it! Oh! Oh! You hear it? Yep. Wow. So we can get both hands onto that he's and then all the way up. He's got his glasses on. Dude! Woo! Hey. Yeah! Oh. What a gamer! Deathless first try, boys.
Wow. Oh. Good job, dude. Oh, shit. So you could hear he did really well to like exert himself and go above and beyond and uh, just put everything he had into that climb, which is always nice to see and pretty impressive overall. We then moved on to this yellow climb over here or yellow holds, which was uh, starts out with a bit of a jump, the dino, and then a couple of crap pieces into some really tough moves where you have to kind of figure out what you want to do, whether it's uh, heel hooks, toe hooks, uh, just strong upward uh, underclings and uh, I was talking to the other guys and I saw them doing this and I wanted to come over and have a go as well and uh, it was actually a really nice send for me. Uh, it was a flash in the end and a flash means first try and I was trying to figure out how to do it on the fly and it just I felt very strong on the climb even though the last few moves and few holds were kind of garbage but I stuck to it which I thought was a pretty strong couple of sequences here and tried to figure it out. Got a little bit of a heel hook uh, on the right there, slapped up to the bad sloper, stuck that somehow, and then you had to go around and swing over to the next little uh, footer while maintaining a, a whole bunch of core tension. And then you're supposed to top out by uh, getting over the top of the um, climb and mantling. And mantling just means um, sort of going over the top of the problem uh, on a flat surface, which sometimes involves absolutely no pieces. You then had Quinn that fell, the uh, infamous clip at this point. He tried to do the exact same um, climb as the rest of us, uh, or the dino as the rest of us, which you know takes a lot of balls. And he almost got it. He was almost there. You can see just absolute, ooh, just not quite uh, getting enough. Um, distance on that one and sometimes you just got to flex on everyone and I had to dive in and do it with the one arm and uh, <laughs> I, I you can't help it sometimes when you know that you can do something and uh, it's gonna potentially impress a bunch of people you have to just give it a shot because worst case scenario you fail and look like a dickhead best case scenario well everyone's like Whoop, not bad and then we tried this black uh, problem, or at least I tried this black problem. This one had some really bad holds, some really bad positions, and it was kind of hard to figure out. So I wasn't um, doing this one very efficiently or very well at all, and I was pumping out big time because it just wasn't uh, working for me. I wasn't getting the exact right moves, the exact right holds, and I was really figuring it out as I went because it was kind of a confusing climb and sometimes you won't be able to read a climb until you actually just jump on and give it a shot and quite often you just won't be able to uh, figure it out without multiple attempts. So I was a bit pumped out there and had to fall down. You then had uh, Noogie try this um, green climb. So green is just uh, I think a bit easier than purples, uh, maybe a bit harder, depends on um, the actual climbs themselves and this one was also a pretty good send for him or not quite a send but a pretty good attempt uh, the holds are not very good and he seems to just kind of know what he wants to do and kind of understand the basics of climbing I think so he's been doing really well on his first try and they all did really well but uh, he just kind of looked like he had better body positioning than the rest and it also is potentially because he's that much lighter. I would guess a good 10 kilos lighter than Havoc and a good 20 kilos he um, sorry, lighter than uh, Quinn and um, Ziz. And then you got Quinn trying a purple climb here. He did end up trying this one something like 10 times, but we're like two hours into our session by that point. And when you're new and trying out um, lots of climbs, your forearms just give way pretty damn soon. So after like an hour, you won't really be able to grip anything. You won't really be able to hold on to anything. And your arms just say, no thanks. And they start giving out. There's nothing you can do about it. But to his credit, he kept on trying. And uh, yeah, overall managed to get a few sends and get pretty close on a bunch of climbs. And then we have uh, my brother going for this yellow climb here, which was a pretty strong send from him. Uh, start with two hands down bottom, straight into an overhead pinch. And then there's a nice little sloper slap. You get a little undercling if you need it, but he goes all the way up to the next, uh, I think, kind of slopey pinch. Uh, get a foot on, a big heel, which is a pretty awkward position unless you've uh, kind of learned and trained how to do those. And then a nice over, uh, 
over the edge left toe into some uh, just straightforward left and right hands and over the top for a mantle. It's a pretty strong send and uh, sure he would have been happy with that one. I then gave a shot on this black which is just a fucking nuts problem honestly. I gave it one real good shot and then I came back for a few others after that and couldn't repeat the success because I was just starting to gas out getting really pumped. But uh, the idea here is these are kind of slopey pinches. There's no good uh, purchase on these holds whatsoever. You then have to get a big left heel, pinch this right hand really strong and lean and rock over onto that heel into the next little slope. And then a big strong um, come out of the uh, 45 degree section because that entire area is overhung into a couple of crimps and then the next hold is like this uh, crimp which is a really shallow part but it's also at a horrible angle you have no real good feet and you're supposed to punch out stick it and i couldn't quite do that because i wasn't quite sure if that's what i was supposed to do and as well as that i was getting tired uh, we then w moved over down here to try this dino out so you start with two right hand uh, two red holds and jump all the way to the next red hold and Bunch of people tried and failed. I came in and managed to get the uh, dino stick on it and didn't want to climb all the way to the top because then I'd have to climb down. Didn't feel like it. This dude here, Jack, one of the guys that we uh, made friends with, he's a little bit taller and he didn't really need to jump and it just disgusted all of us. So that's uh, just how it goes. Sometimes the taller people have a much easier time in the gym or on certain climbs and certain problems, but a lot of the times uh, taller people will be at a disadvantage because of uh, big sorts of moves like this potentially where you need to get toe hooks, heel hooks, and uh, you might be more compressed. And taller people will have more troubles with some moves and shorter people will have troubles with other moves. I think overall it kind of balances out. So if you're short, kind of like me, don't feel too bad about um, climbing and bouldering. Because once you get strong enough, it really doesn't matter too much who's taller or shorter because uh, it'll kind of balance out. There will be harder stuff, there'll be easier stuff, but you can do it from both angles. And this is the yellow climb straight afterwards that I managed to send, which was pretty tiring and uh, pretty strong as well off of some bad slopers. And then I also decided to try out this black climb, which was just super strong, really bad holds, and I couldn't quite decide what I wanted to do here. It was double gassed on, which is what I just did there. Uh, two sort of crimps that are pulling away from each other and then around the big volume piece here to get onto some crimps, onto another slopey crimp. And then you're supposed to, I think, you're supposed to smear onto the wall with your feet and then get a big heel hook on the left. And I couldn't quite do that, slipped off and I was pretty tired. By this point, my arms were failing me big time. We're Almost been climbing for like three hours and it was while streaming and carrying the backpack around and uh, I was carrying that backpack around from climb to climb from uh, streamer to streamer and it's it weighs like five to ten kilos and most of the time I was pretty tired getting off of my climbs and then having to do that and it was getting uh, just a bit much for my forearms. This climb here, uh, I couldn't quite do. I was getting a bit tired. My brother, I think, ends up sending it. So it's a black climb with a big sort of move there to start with. You come out of the cave, which is almost 45 degrees, and onto a pretty bad little crimp there, sort of a crimp rail. Uh, get your feet up. If you can lock both feet in, that'd be great. And I think he does manage to do that. And then you punch up to the next little pinch, uh, a pinchy crimp which is really thin and pretty bad. Got to position yourself just right underneath it and get a foot up and finish off on top. So that was a really strong send from him because uh, the rest of us couldn't manage to do it at this point. And he's got a bit more endurance uh, since he climbs outdoors and on ropes a lot more than uh, someone like me would. And then we wrapped up and this is just uh, before I headed off to the uh, exclusive dinner or the ultra VIP dinner. It was a pretty good successful stream I think for bouldering. First time I ever did IRL stream and first time I ever uh, showed off the bouldering, what a typical gym session looks like for us. And uh, it was a lot of fun and I definitely do want to try it again in the future. But first of all, I need to get a hold of the IRL backpack and then see how things go from there.
From there, we then the next day flew down to Christchurch and that's where we're gonna stay for a couple days. And about an hour away from Christchurch is a very hot bouldering spot called uh, Castle Hill. So for the next half of the video, I will be going over uh, just the clips and um, sort of um, climbs and pictures that I've got of Castle Hill, uh, which is our outdoor sort of section and uh, hopefully getting some uh, good stories in as well and showing you what it's all about. So this is uh, just outside of Castle Hill, uh, about an hour away, and I'm just taking some photos, looking around at the scenery of the place. So you can see that we're at a cafe just off to the side, and there's a big donut thing that we took some photos on, and it's the first time we saw any real big mountains and stuff in the background. And uh, you can see that throughout some of these um, videos just uh, of us driving there in our van. There's some pretty picturesque uh, New Zealand countryside and uh, it's kind of towards where we're driving um, or where we're going to be uh, just below the base of the mountain and doing a bunch of bouldering. So you can see some of the mountains are covered in snow, some are just um, a bit dirty and covered in nothing and it's just it's a good one hour drive from where we were staying uh, through some countryside to get to the actual mountain itself and once we got there it looked a little something like this so we pulled off into the car park and once we're in the car park i'm standing on a big rock and just doing a pan around of the entire place that's our crew and that's a, a bouldering mat that he's got on his back so you place the bouldering mat at the base of a climb and then you can fall a little bit safer but all of these rocks are basically what castle hill is uh, and then there's me taking the actual uh, photo or camera shot there so you can see this is us walking towards uh, a lot of the rocks this is a really big rock that some people are abseiling down and abseiling is just um, tying in at the top and then coming down uh, off of a rope and getting a bit of um, I don't know, thrill that way, whereas this guy is trying to figure out the route with a bit of rope action and it's just off to the side on a very sort of small part of the rock. But what we're doing has nothing to do with that. It's not um, not climbing at all. It's just bouldering, which means no ropes and not going too high and just taking a few more photos of um, the countryside and what's to come behind us and all of that. And for the most part, I think that's all there is from my phone. So the rest will be from um, someone else's phone, Arns, who was taking a lot of the photos. So that's us just chilling inside the uh, big donut because you can climb in, take a photo. And then once we actually got to the place, this is what we're looking at. So we're walking in. There's, it's actually kind of touristy. There are a lot of uh, people walking in and uh, checking out. Uh, just the rocks and the countryside and all of that with no intention of climbing just a tourist sort of spot as well and uh, yeah it's really kind of cool just seeing the places that we're going to climb and the uh, big mountainous snowy mountains uh, in the background so it was pretty cold for what we were doing because um, it was something like 10 degrees most of the time with lots of winds uh, that's me brother Matt and then there's us walking it in uh, and just sussing it out. So that's from far away. This doesn't look that big, but these are really big uh, sort of uh, mountainous boulders. You can see the tiny guy there and you can see the guy at the top there. So and the guy at the bottom. So as we get closer and closer, it becomes pretty apparent just how big these rocks are. And uh, you can see the guy downscaling there or abseiling. And it's a bit of a strange approach to get through a lot of these areas to get to the things that we want to climb. So it is a bit tough. You do have to have pretty decent shoes and a good set of calves on you because it'll start burning your legs quite bad once you're going through all of these um, uphill sections. And we're just trying to find out because we do have a book um, that specifically people have uh, written and catalogued all of the climbs at this place at since there's hundreds of boulders uh, and you're just trying to figure out where you are and what stuff you want to climb and uh, yeah it's kind of tough to figure out or find exactly what you want a lot of the time so the first climb we found was this uh, really just shit slopey and uh, treacherous side boulder which you're just supposed to find some really bad feet slap up the wall and then top out at the top and matt was the first one to manage to finish this one uh, you can see we've got our boulder mats down in the corner there uh, which 
is how you fall. Someone will help spot you if you need and try and direct you onto the mats. So you're never in real too much danger, but you can slightly injure yourself if you're not careful. But you're supposed to finish up the top and it's something like a V2 to begin with. But this entire place was pretty, uh, the word we're looking for is sandbagged. So the certain grade it will say, like it'll say um, it's a V2, but in reality it is probably a V3 or a V4. So the grades are sandbagged, meaning they're a lot weaker than you feel like they are. So we just kind of imagine that most climbs uh, are a few grades higher than they're supposed to be, and everything we're doing is quite a bit harder than it's being graded. Or at least that's how it felt for us, and that's what uh, a lot of the consensus on the internet about this place is, that uh, it doesn't quite fit the grades. But it's some scary stuff, especially when you have absolutely no feet to stand on. You do fall plenty, and you do kind of make it to the top sometimes. And sometimes, when you're near the top, you're scared shitless, and you don't really want to commit too much more. And then the second climb I managed to do was right nearby, which isn't much of a climb. It's just trying to top out this mantle. So as I said, a mantle is just getting over the top of the lip of a hold or climb. And uh, there's absolutely nothing on top of this one. It's just crap. It's like flat, slopey, and um, awful rock. And the idea here is to get a big heel up off of this nothing, and then hopefully um, pull yourself up and over the top of it. And so here is an example of Igor managing to do it. So big sort of heel, pull yourself up over the top, and push yourself into it. Mantles are really physical stuff, and uh, if you're not used to doing them, then it's just going to take a lot of work getting through it. And none of us are really used to mantling, so it was a learning process for all of us, and uh, finally got through that one pretty happily, though. Uh, after that, though, we did move on to another boulder somewhere else. Uh, not that, not that, not that. Plenty of videos. We literally have like hundreds of videos here trying out all of these problems. Uh, there we are. We're walking through the fields and trying to find some new stuff to climb. And eventually, um, that's just us overhead looking for some stuff. We do eventually find something we actually want to try and climb. And this here was the next climb that we got into. I think it was a V4, something like that. Pretty physical stuff, a little bit technical. You just got to find the right sequence where there's a good toe hook, a good heel hook, and then a few pockets that you have to hit in the right spot and then really position your body in a certain way to make use of the holds because they're not very good but you do have to really lean over and uh, position yourself just right to make them a bit better. So it's pretty physical stuff and I think most of us got through it. There is a good video of uh, Matt kind of not doing that well on it because he looks like he nearly breaks his ankle. So let's see if we can find that one. I was pretty happy with that. It was pretty physical. Um, Perhaps this is the one. So this is Matt giving it a shot as well. And he gets the heel hook in, which is good. You then either keep the heel or readjust into kind of a toe. And that's what's happening here. Doesn't quite get a good purchase on the uh, hold over the top. Goes for that reverse ankle snap. And God knows what he's doing there. And then pulls off. <laughs> and uh, it was some real cringe shit watching that ankle from that angle. I was just like, oh God, no, please do something better than that. But no injuries were had there. It was just a bit of an awkward position. Uh, Andrew tried that out as well. Didn't quite get to the top though, because um, it is a pretty tough one. So he's trying to figure it out, but couldn't quite get there. And uh, it's just, it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, if someone climbs it successfully, they make it look pretty easy always. That's not just me. That's not you know, specific to anything like that. Whenever you watch someone crush a problem, it always looks really easy. Uh, so then you get onto it yourself and holy shit, it feels like a whole different thing. So you can see he's kind of struggling to get through that one. Not quite sure how he's um, positioning himself and all of that. And then we moved on to what was a pretty deathly highball for us. So there's this big um, sort of chimney rock that has just nothing but sloper slab uh, either side and you're kind of supposed to compress yourself through it and through to the top and then just top out and it's a good five meters up or so and there's no holds anywhere and it's some pretty dangerous shit or at least it felt super dangerous and there were a few falls to be had throughout this uh throughout these attempts 
see if I can find the one where um, this may be the one where Matt falls. Oh yeah. So you slowly and surely try and wedge your way up and try and put feet wherever you can, even though there's no real feet. So it's largely about just compression and real strong pushing and pulling and all of that. And we are a few meters up and we do have some mats down below and he's wedging himself as best as he can, but has a bit of a tumble and there's no one spotting at the time because you can't really spot this one. It's very uh, narrowed down and the best we can do is put some mats there. And ugh, that was scary shit. Um, because I also did do that climb and I did get to, let's see, that's not me there, uh, did get to the top and it did take me a good solid four minutes of climbing. So four minutes of doing this shit, just, I was completely wrecked and I was terrified near the top because, uh, the start's not too bad. You have some really nothing hands. You got to really compress yourself in. And then eventually you're supposed to wedge yourself up into the top of the um, two pieces like so. And then you just got to keep wedging and going up and up. But at this point, I'm at the point of no return. I can't go back down because there's just no possible way without falling or jumping. You've either got to go up or you've got to fall. And I definitely wanted to commit to the up, but I was stuck in between here. My singlet was like caught on the back. And it's just a real slow slog of four minutes worth of trying to wedge myself out of this thing. And it took me, yeah, a full four minutes. And in the end, I was exhausted and happy to be alive because I was terrified at the top there. It might not look that far, but it is a good five meters up and you really don't want to be falling from this shit ever. We then have another few pictures of the uh, countryside where this is the opposite end of where we're climbing. You just have a look around and you can see lots of boulders, lots of uh, picturesque mountains and a pretty chilly day uh, overall. Uh, we then moved on to a climb that had two variations, this way for a V2, this way for a V6. And V2 seemed pretty hard, but it was doable. The V6 seemed impossible. Uh, so we'll see if there's an actual send here. Uh, there actually is a send of me or a video of me sending this one and it was not very pretty. So you got one pocket hold here and then you're supposed to jump into the next pocket uh, and the climb where I actually finish it, hold the fuck on. We have so many videos is probably this one. So you start out with the pocket, you have a really bad foot that does nothing for nobody. Uh, it doesn't like feel good at all. You slip out of it most times. Uh, no other real second foot and then just have to jump and catch and finally caught it. And over the top is nothing. There's just like a real bad slopey flat um, part and you're supposed to mantle out over the top. And I did my best fucking Eric Cartman South Park noise to, uh, well, get through it in the end. Let me see if I can make the sound for this stuff work. So we're trying our best to uh, just beach whale over the top is basically how I would describe it. <laughs> and at this point, once again, you get pretty scared at the top because you don't want to fall back down and hurt yourself. And um, you just do your best to try and get over the top. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, of course, our fearless camera woman, Arn, uh, laughing at me as I beach my way up the top because she'd obviously do it a lot easier and she's not afraid of anything. Or maybe the exact opposite is true. So I did get over the top and it was a pretty tough V2, honestly. Um, and Igor, my brother, did that afterwards and I think he made it look a whole lot easier. See if I can find the video of that. It's probably that there. He also managed to jump into the pocket pretty easily because he's just a bit taller, but did take quite a few goes to get there. And then to actually finish it, he just pulled over it quite a bit nicer, used his uh, knee, I do believe, and didn't have to do any of the beaching like I did because uh, he just figured it out a bit better than I did, I think. Maybe he's a bit taller, maybe he's a bit more skilled, a bit more handsome, who the fuck knows. Uh, we did 
yeah, we did then move on to another really quite tough problem, and that one involved a dyno. So not this thing, but this is a crack climb that uh, had no real finish for us. You go up, crack climb, which just means there's a crack that you follow along with your hands, and then there was no real good top out here. Didn't know how to get over the top and uh, didn't manage to. So Igor spent like a couple of minutes just dicking around over here and never managed to top out because it's pretty scary stuff if you fuck it up and fall in a bad spot. So you don't want to commit to anything super bad and there was nothing really good up there. The actual climb we then wanted to work on was this dyno. So you start with uh, just a small rail, two shitty finger or um, handholds and no real feet. And then you're supposed to jump into that pocket there. And Matt caught it a couple times and then I caught it once and managed to finish from there. And it was, uh, I think something like a V4, but in the end felt a lot harder than that. So this is a Matt finishing it or sticking the dyno i do believe so we'll see how this goes um from never mind not this one he must have done it in a slightly different video because he did he was the first one of us to stick it there it is which we were wildly impressed at and uh, he couldn't quite finish it off though because the actual top out on this is horrible You can do it, Matt. So there's a big kind of pocket all the way over the top, which is a big sort of campus um, to get through. And it's just a struggle. There's no good feet. There's a big barrier of a climb or hold in the way. And eventually, if you can get all the way over the top, you'll be able to finish it. And I think this will be the video of me actually finishing this one, which took me a lot of effort and it was the only time I actually managed to catch the dino and since I caught it there was no freaking way I was going to let go. <laughs> yes. yes! It's a pretty nice uh, little dino stick where you you know swing out and then you still have to get your absolute no feet wherever the fuck you can and then try and balls in over the top couldn't quite get there because it's a big reach over a whole bunch of nothing to get to the actual good part and I think this second time when I went up and came back down to try and recover it was a lot of strain on my shoulder I almost popped my shoulder doing that um, because I wasn't expecting to hold that when I was falling back in but I just guts through it and did it anyway yes. finally got over the top and then you have to get a foot up and go over the top for a mantle and finish off there. There's also no good way to come back down from this climb. Uh, usually there's maybe a slightly nicer part around the back. For this one, you just have to down climb here and jump down and it's a bit yeah. of a scary thing. They managed to finish that one off and it was a very tough climb that couldn't actually replicate after that. We did then uh, find there's a big sort of rock pond in the middle of this entire area. Then there's Matt given a hands up, I guess, I don't know. And then we've moved on to our pretty much last climb of the day that was worth um, looking at, which was a V9 supposedly. And it took, it didn't look much like a V9. It seemed very realistic. And in the end, I almost got to the end of it and we spent a good couple hours just working it. And I'll find my best attempt for us. Uh, maybe it was a shirts off one. Probably not this one. It would have then instead been... We did have uh, everyone having a go on this one. And it's a bit of an awkward one. You have to start out with a big heel hook and then do a real sideways move across another sideways move. And you're basically on an angle the entire time. There's no good feet. And Andrew is getting pretty damn close through it as well, or at least well enough. But the hard part basically starts there. and. Uh, the best attempt I got was right near the end, but couldn't quite finish it off. And let me see if I can find a better one. That's still not the one. That's still not the one. A smarter man would edit this video down better to show off um, only the good parts as opposed to just waffling on while trying to find the good parts.
live water dickhead. Let me see if this is the one. Yeah, I think this is the best attempt I had in the end. So you start out over there, um, big heel, and then you go out. And this is supposed to be a V9, and I almost managed to finish a V9, supposedly. Uh, so you have no real feet there. That's the biggest problem because you're just pushing off of essentially nothing. I had to camp us down into some bad holds. Another sort of no footer into a match off of a really bad slopey rail. And then you're supposed to go out to this little sort of raily pocket thing and then go up onto a slopey slab. This thing is nothing. Yes, yes. And this is where I got stuck because I was just exhausted and couldn't figure out how to get over the top at this point. That's probably the V9 move, honestly, and the hardest part of the climb. And makes sense because I couldn't get that far, whereas I think I'm maybe a V7, V8 climber. Oh, no. And it was just an exhausting day because we're at this point six hours into the day and it was, yeah, there wasn't much energy going around. Um, last thing that these guys did, my brother and the other two dudes were uh, working the crack. And this is just a big crack climb that you're supposed to like wedge your way up and then do stuff. I didn't bother trying this one because it looked like too much energy for me at this point of the day. And I'm not really interested in crack climbs because it'll just hurt my hands. So the last thing I actually did try for the day was this really heinous um, slopery rail thing that has no feet once again, which is the running theme of Castle Hill, just no feet. And you're supposed to slap your way up this rail. And it was so physical and so intense that by the end of the day, I couldn't really do shit on it and probably realistically couldn't do it at all anyway. So that was the last thing I tried. And this was after like six hours of climbing. I ended up getting pretty badly sunburnt on my chest, pretty badly on my arms and a little bit on the face while it was also really cold and really windy. So it's a kind of a weird place to be climbing. And there's just, like I said, the running theme of the place is no feet. Um, there's no good hands. And this is us, I guess, walking through back to the car after a long day's work, some hard, hard climbing. And a uh, pretty picturesque little background, I guess, for us um, on the way back. That's just me and the brother walking back to the car. Like I said, mega exhausted, very happy with the trip and very happy with the climbing overall. But uh, outdoor stuff, really not for me overall. It's good and it's fun, but man, I'm not that good at it. And man, does it hurt a lot more than a gym does. Uh, so still, I prefer gym bouldering, but... This is a little look into our outdoor adventures and earlier in the video, the uh, New Zealand Auckland bouldering stream. That was my first IRL stream. Like I said, I would like to get the IRL backpack, do some more outdoor streams, um, more bouldering action, maybe some outdoor bouldering action and hopefully a few more IRL streams in general. If you're into that sort of content, if you're not, well, fuck it. There's still lots of Path of Exile to be going around on this channel in any case. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and the wrap-up. Hope it wasn't too boring. It probably was. My bad. And I'll see you guys next time.